Hello there kitties, I'm Carrie, the vacuum tube witch and today we're gonna do some non-rocket science and let's have some fun with Firetrons. A Firetron is a uh, gas-filled tube, either a uh, triode or a tetrode that has a uh, pretty interesting and, uh, and useful feature that uh, once uh, ignited it will keep uh, conducting the current between the anode and the cathode until we disconnect the power or until we um, bias the, the tube uh, so low that um, it will go uh, out of conduction but uh, generally when uh, when it's ignited, it will keep conducting. And uh, those tubes uh, were the mainstay of um, any industrial automation. They were also used in, uh, in uh, modulated uh, rectifier circuits, especially in high power applications in uh, industrial automation. And uh, I've got a bunch of uh, larger and uh, smaller firetrons uh, ranging from well, <laughs> hope you hope it's not a uh, gravitational disassembly <laughs> ranging from uh, hepto tubes um, so somewhat larger. I don't have the really big ones because <laughs> my uh, tube collection is not that big. But uh, we're gonna do some experimenting to see how uh, those things work. And uh, right now let's take a look at some uh, data sheets of the Firetrans I have. And let's change the view. So we've got the TG3-0.1 slash 1.3. That's, that's this uh, Soviet uh, Firetron with a Heptor base. And there's some uh, data on it. Uh, what's remarkable about this Firetron is that it is heated. And it's not always the case. It's generally a low power device. The peak anode current is uh, 0 0.5 uh, amp and average anode current is 0 0.1 amp. And uh, let's take a look at another miniature Firetron, 5823, the western one. I've got two of them. One of them is made by Philips and the other one was made um, in the German Democratic Republic, if you can call it democratic. <laughs> because the democracy there was questionable. And uh, they differ quite a lot in their construction. One of them has a cylindrical anode. And the other one uh, has a uh, partial anode like you see on the page, on the photo of, uh, of this tube. And this tube has... Uh, somewhat uh, lower power it can uh, work with uh, uh, let me see what's the maximum uh, peak uh, plate current is uh, 100 milliamps and uh, and average uh, plate current is uh, 25 milliamps so, it's time to get to the bench 
and do some experimenting, but before that happens, I will just grab a Heptor base for for those miniature fire trans. By the way, um, those miniature fire trans. Uh, if you saw the episode on the AEG time relay, one of them uh, is uh, found in that device, and uh, and you could see it in action. And we'll take another look at such a tube. So one moment, please. Let me grab the base. And let's get to the bench. There's some discombobulation going on the bench. I'm working on the dirty dozen amp project. The tubes are running off pretty nicely, which I don't want. And at the moment, I've got the large uh, EC50 side contact uh, base uh, Firetron. Uh, let's hold it by uh, by the by the base. Uh, make it a little bit safer, just a teeny tiny bit, because I've got it hooked up to the power supply. And the plate voltage is there, it's something like 250 volts. Dangerous plate voltage. <laughs> but I do dangerous stuff, no problem. <laughs> Maybe to get a better view, I will turn off the light. And... Uh, Let's uh, let's uh, get a better view on uh, both um, the tube and the equipment. And uh, right uh, right over there in the upper left corner, you can see the bench power supply for working on uh, vacuum tube projects and prototypes. I will switch uh, the voltmeter to indicate the plate voltage. Setting it at 250 volts DC. Here we've got a light bulb that will light up uh, after I fire the Firetron. And Prepare yourself for seeing the light. And apart from the light bulb, there's some uh, other light I would like to show you. The bright blue glow inside the fire trans plate. This is perfectly normal for gas filled tubes. Uh, Probably with xenon or or something like that. It's not neon. And uh, Ar argon, I guess, would be purple, and uh, this uh, this would probably be xenon. Something similar that uh, you can see on the mercury vapor rectifier tubes, like uh, if you watched uh, Curious Mark's video. Uh, on the switch mode power supply for the teletype that used uh, vacuum tubes. It had some um, gas-filled uh, rectifier tubes, or maybe they were even firetrons. Anyway, let's try to put out the light bulb. I will try to lower the plate voltage. It's as low as I can get it. Right now it's at 
120 volts, I will probably have to modify the power supply so that I can go a little bit lower with the voltage. Let's try then to lower the grid bias voltage. Right now we've got minus 20 volts DC on the grid. Going up to minus 40, there is some change. Manipulating the bias voltage, um, turning the knob uh, towards uh, more negative, it makes uh, it makes the light bulb. It makes the light bulb uh, glow a little bit darker, but it's still there. Uh, let's leave the grid bias at minus 40. Go to 200, maybe go to 200 uh, on the plate. Because I couldn't turn it off and, and it's a good sign. Let's switch off the power supply. It goes off completely. Switching back on. See? It's it's dark. No current is flowing here unless I ignite it again. I might have to raise the plate voltage because uh, I lowered it to 200 volts. 250. Still nothing. And uh, this is uh, what happened. Like the, if I set the grid bias lower, because before that I had it at uh, 20 volts negative, and now, now it's uh, over 40 volts negative, it ain't gonna ignite. Let's go to minus 20 on the grid. Maybe if I uh, can get a better lighting on that. And go to 200 on the plate. Lights off. Ignition. And lift off. A nice blue glow in the plate. So the grid voltage uh, affects uh, the ability to fire the Phyrotron. And now let's turn it off again. And let's try uh, going to zero volts on the grid. No grid bias at all. It can uh, self-ignite if the grid voltage, uh, if the if the negative uh, grid voltage is low enough. Let's try this again to see if it was not a fluke. Of course it was Kifli. Minus 20. Minus 10. It ignited at minus 5. Doesn't really want to go off un unless I uh, turn it off. And now 
Watch your eyes, the light is coming back. I also need to turn on my uh, soldering station. Now let's test another Fivertron. So uh, I will stick with the light bulb, change the base and the tube. Uh, just let me grab my engineering notebook. Got some schematics uh, drawn uh, so that I know how to connect the thing. Then the plate voltage lead uh, will still be here. Let's start with the Soviet one. Connecting the grids together Two is scaffold the ground. Of course, when I'm doing all those connections, the power supply is off and the main filter cap is discharged. Three and four will be the heating. It's an indirectly heated tube with 6.3 volts uh, heater voltage, so I don't have to change anything on, uh, on my heater supply. Just gonna use some more some more solder on the on the base doesn't reflow that nicely Should have held them together somewhat longer. Six is the plate and I will connect the remaining one uh, and serious and uh, I forgot about the resistor but I will correct it right, uh, right away.
240k And of course, the tube. The power supply. Let's go dark. It's a uh, pretty remarkable tube that has a cathode uh, off to the side and the connection on the plate broke down Discharging Probably just a cord, cord joint. again negative grid voltage to the max plate voltage to 200 make it 200 and let's go up with the bias voltage And it ignites. It ignites. There is a faint uh, purple glow uh, inside uh, the tube structure. And since it's since it's purple, it might be argon. It's not neon. It's not xenon.
And again, remember that I'm doing dangerous stuff with hundreds of volts DC. So I have to be extra careful and if you want to do some experiments like that, you really have to know what you're doing. Let's go all the way to 300 volts DC on that. The, the glow is not that much stronger. And again, negative uh, grid voltage to the max and uh, plate voltage to the minimum, it doesn't switch off. Switching off the power supply, switching it back on. Hmm. Looks like it hasn't discharged yet, hasn't uh, dropped uh, below the threshold. Now it has. Plate voltage to 250. Negative grid voltage. Let's go up and up. Measuring it. Minus 20. Still not. And uh, I had to reach uh, zero for the Firetron to ignite. So that concludes the um, TG3-0.1 slash 1.3. Watch your eyes again. The light is coming back. And time to rewire the circuit for the 5823. We've got the ignition uh, electrode on pin number 4. So off with the heater. This is a cold cathode tube. It's not heated. Let's try with the 240k resistor, but if, uh, if necessary I will change it to 75. The data sheet recommends uh, 50k, but I wonder if it can be any larger. So the resistor goes to pin number four. Pin number three and seven is the cathode, so I have to move it from two to three. I will probably stop using the negative bias. The plate is pin number one. So you go from here. To here. And uh, I suspect that I will have to ignite this Firetron with a, uh, of course not this, but this, with a uh, positive voltage bet between the grid and the cathode. Let's see. The pass tube in the power supply is slowly heating up and the voltage is rising. 
and interesting things are happening. Like even at uh, at negative uh, voltage, this this just can't be right. Like uh, it's conducting. Though the ignition voltage uh, should be 80 volts, I will probably have to check the data sheet, but uh, just just look at that beautiful purple glow. The tube is getting hot. I better turn it off. I, uh, I better crank the voltage down. And according to the schematic, uh, the ignition uh, electrode uh, should be placed on, uh, on positive uh, for a moment. It's not positive at all. It should be pin number four. Uh, let me check the data sheet again. Plate is one, cathode is three, and uh, starter electrode is four. So it should be all correct. And that's pretty interesting. Might take some investigation with a multimeter. Why don't do this thing comes on again? The plate voltage is rising. And let's raise the plate voltage, it ignited. So I must have passed the self-ignition uh, threshold. That's something like um, you see with uh, voltage regulator tubes. Like uh, you've got uh, two electrodes, the, the anode and the cathode. And after reaching some uh, threshold voltage, uh, it will ignite and uh, keep uh, a steady voltage way uh, lower than the ignition voltage. So uh, what I have to do now is cranking it up uh, until I reach the ignition voltage, noting that it's, uh, it's the value. Slowly cranking up, slowly cranking up. It's there. It's something like 180 below 200 volts. So now what I would like to do Keeping the voltage below the ignition threshold for the anode, I will go up with the grid voltage and try to ignite the tube, but doesn't look like it happens. So the negative uh, voltage doesn't affect it at all. 
And now, watch me do dangerous stuff again. I will try to ignite the tube. Plate supply is on. I will try to ignite the tube through the resistor from the positive supply. And I did. And now I will go down with the supply voltage. at 150 and let's ignite it again try again to see if it was not a fluke and let's turn off the light to see the beautiful purple glow a thing of beauty and a joy forever Turning off the power supply. And let's try a uh, Eastern German uh, tube of the same type to see how it looks when I uh, ignite it. Ignition. Look at that. Lovely pink. Pure cuteness. And I don't have any more Fivertrons to play with. <laughs> so let's get back to my So that would be it for the Firetron fun, because the glow of noble gases, when you pass some uh, electrons through that, it fills you with determination. Until next time, bye!